I grew up in New York. I grew up in a very liberal household. I went to a very liberal college, and that absolutely informs my opinion about the military. I have never been in the military. I am completely a novice in, in certain areas. The veteran experience was never part of the foreground experience in my family, um, so I never identified myself as a military family member. Both of my grandparents served, my father served, and I think the Peace Corps became my, not equivalent, but a way of serving that was not fighting. My best friend from college was in the Air Force, and I didn't realize how emotional the topic was for me until, until it was brought up, and then all of a sudden I had all of these opinions. We talk about the civilian-military divide, and we talk a lot to the military folks about it, um, but nobody's asking the civilians where the civilian divide comes from. I think the average American spends maybe not a lot of time thinking about the military um, or even thinking about the existence of the military-civilian divide. I don't think it's done with any malintent. Uh, the civilians in this world can't necessarily comprehend uh, what the military necessarily goes through, what veterans necessarily go through. There is definitely uh, a separation because I am here in New York City, in, in Brooklyn, and I'm not in the Middle East. I'm not experiencing those things. I think there's a tendency, and I think it goes on both sides, that a lot of veterans come home and are either isolated or just want to spend time with other veterans because we want to be around people that we feel can understand us and understand the things we're experiencing, and especially when it comes to trauma. A lot of people feel that the only folks that can help veterans are other veterans because they're the only ones who are going to understand. They've walked in my shoes. And there definitely is something to having someone like you or, or, or representative of you help you. Veterans will raise this idea of um, you, you just don't understand. Um, you weren't there. You didn't choose to serve. You weren't asked to serve. Um, and so they have a really difficult time looking at civilians and saying, how can you truly understand what I've been through? Um, and then from the civilian side, I think People come at, it, come at it from very different angles. Some people say, you know, I want to honor veterans. I want to thank them for their service. Other people say, I was opposed to the war, and I'm opposed to everything that you've done. And so people kind of tend to come at the divide with their own preconceived notions and, and biases about what that experience is on either side of it. I didn't know a whole lot when my brother first enlisted. Uh, he explained to us that he was going to training and then he was going to be assigned a permanent base. So I didn't really know a whole lot. I guess I, and I didn't do any research because I maybe didn't want to know either. My best friend was in the Air Force and, you know, I don't often think about her as a veteran because it was a huge part of her life, but it wasn't a huge part of her friendship, of our friendship, her friendship with me. And I think that that is indicative of, of this divide that exists. I think that when you come back from the Peace Corps, there's this really hard adjustment, right? You've lived in this other place, you've gotten into a community, you've had all these experiences, and you come home and like no one, no one gets it. Like people, People ask how it is, and you start to tell them, and they like check out. You know, even your family, even people you care about, because it's like it's too different to understand. Um, and I think I think the military must be even more like that. I think caregivers and spouses have a really unique lens on the military-civilian divide because um, we're related to it. Our family members serve. Um, you know, we have our own kind of experience of living on base and deployment and sacrifice um, and everything that's entailed with it. Um, and so we get to carry that, but we don't often get recognized as, as people who serve, per se. When we talk about our veterans right away, it's we appreciate them, we give them gratitude, and that's what we say out loud. But when they come in for an interview, we look at them and say, well, how is this person affected by what they just went through? Yes, they were given great training. Yes, they'd be great workers. Yes, they, they would have a great sense of, of duty and responsibility but how were they traumatized? How will that emotional um, aspect come out in their work? Can I trust them on that level? Can they trust themselves? 
And I think that's something that we don't speak about and that we need to speak about. It's so easy to forget that when you talk about the military, when you talk about all of the spending, it's, it's people that you're discussing and it's, it's the military and the army, it's filled with people. And um, I, I just, I think it's very, very easy to forget that, that we're all human beings. And yes, these people are being asked to do extraordinary things, terrible things, but at the end of the day, even if they have a different moral code, they're still just like you. I've always felt like the civilians are the observers and the supporters, but it seems like recently we've done more observing than supporting. Um, and I think that's just because we all have a lot of anger about the wars that we're engaged in and have been engaged in for a while. And we, as a country, haven't been able to separate our anger at the wars from our ability to support our military service men and women. It's important that although you may feel that you have no frame of reference to understand a veteran and what a veteran's experienced um, and may have a tendency to want to just be like, wow, like I want to support you. I think that's great, but I really don't, I, I can't imagine what that was like. Um, I, I think we have to try to work on being open to listening and being open to the experiences that veterans have. The onus is not just on the civilians, but it's also on the military. They have to be more welcoming to opportunities to interact with civilians so that they can combat that, that divide. Um, it's also a service member's responsibility to share their military experience and share their story. Because the truth is their story is not just theirs, it's ours. It belongs to the American people. And if they don't share it, if they don't share their story and their struggles and, and their needs, then the civilian doesn't understand what they are and don't know how to assist them in those manners. If you can create a space where veterans and civilians can interact, where there's a level playing field, or even if it's not level, there's some kind of thing that they're both passionate about, they both love World of Warcraft, they can like connect in this way and their other differences kind of fall apart and then that can lead to like real conversations, which I think can surmount the barriers that obviously exist between a civilian experience and a veteran. I would want them to tell me everything that they've experienced, how they feel about it, why they did it, why they thought it was right, why they have second guesses about some of it. Um, and I think that's the way that I would learn and I would truly be able to appreciate where they've been and they would be able to heal. Aside from having conversations with veterans and recognizing their um, unique experience and really holding that and listening to it, I think you can also offer to help carry part of that burden with them. Think about what it is that you do that makes you responsible for our country's actions overseas. You know, when's the last time you voted in an election? Did you choose not to vote? What's the repercussion of that? When's the last time you wrote to your local representatives? Do you know what your representatives' positions are on the use of military force? Um, educate yourself, because it really is your voting power and your opinion that can affect the, the tide and the outcome of what we do overseas.